Art and Landscaping. Jim, today we're going to answer some viewer questions. Um, let's start off with this first one. I'd like to grow milkweed for the monarch butterflies. How do I go about doing this? Well, it, it's, that's interesting because the milkweed that commonly is, you know, used by the monarchs is called common milkweed. And common milkweed is, grows all over the place. If you drive around the countryside and you know what you're looking for, it's all over the place. So it's not like you have to plant that to keep monarchs around. There's plenty of it around. Mm -hmm. I like to get them close up and personal where they can watch the caterpillars grow and all that. But the common milkweed is, is a tough plant. It's not something that grows or you can, you can pick up easily at a garden center or something. If you really want that plant, you can get, collect seed from the year before, plant it the next spring, and it'll probably take a couple of years to grow it. But it is also a weedy plant. So you want it on the edge of a garden or out in a field or something like that nearby. Okay. So, you know, there are a couple of varieties of plants. There, there are types of milkweeds that are ornamental in the garden. Um, the one is called butterfly weed. And it's got a bright orange flower, um, really pretty, very really striking. You know, the, the uh, butterflies like it as well. And uh, that one, I mean, you're planting the milkweeds for the larva stage to feed on, so they chew on the leaves, basically. And, uh, you know, even though it's ornamental with a flower, you know, maybe the leaves will get eaten up. Mm -hmm. One is called swamp milkweed. And the swamp milkweed is, has a, got a very pretty pink flower, uh, and it grows quite tall. It'll grow in the three-foot-plus range. It also natively grows in wet areas, so it can tolerate wet soil. Um, that one is readily available, and that one actually establishes quite quickly. It also can spread pretty good. Okay. Those two varieties are available and can be done. Gotcha. So you mentioned hummingbirds. What is the best way to attract those? Well, two ways of attracting them. I mean, first of all, hummingbirds are attracted by um, bright colored flowers. And they'll, they'll go to almost, they'll, they'll, they'll approach almost any flower that's bright colored. You know, the ones with more of a tubular flower or that produce nectar are much more attractive to them. And it'd be amazing how many different flowers, wild plants, or ones you plant that they're attracted to. And uh, you get the tubular flowers like a salvia or a fuchsia or something like that. Hanging basket of fuchsia is a great way of doing it. So Awesome. So what about hummingbird feeders? All right, hummingbird feeders are, are a lot of fun. I mean, hummingbirds are very entertaining. Yes. <laughs> I put my hummingbird feeders out right around the 1st of May. And they usually arrive shortly after that. And this year they seem to be almost a week late for a lot of people. But uh, they'll come to that, you know, regularly. And a couple of pointers with the hummingbird feeders is, first of all, that, you know, a lot of times you'll, you go to the stores and they'll be selling this red nectar or hummingbird feeders. You don't need that. In fact, some people say that that um, dye in there is not really good for them in the first place. All you need is like one-third of a cup of of sugar to a cup of water, boil it, dissolve it, let it cool, and you're ready to go. So it's very inexpensive and easy. And the other thing is, uh, you know, especially in warm weather, that sugar water will get cloudy, and you do need to weekly or even sooner uh, clean it out, wash it out really good, fresh, fresh, uh, fresh uh, nectar mix in there for the season. Okay. Thank you so much, Jim. We always appreciate you answering these questions. All right. You're welcome. I'm Jim Hotelling, the home gardener from Hillside Garden Landscaping.